Early presidential elections will be held in Kazakhstan. The election of the president is scheduled for June 9, 2019. President of Kazakhstan, Qasim Jomart Tokayev, provided guarantees that the upcoming elections will be open and fair. I firmly believe that conducting early presidential elections is necessary for Kazakhstan. We need to remove any uncertainty in order to ensure public and political agreement and move effectively forward to address and achieve the social and economic development objectives. Meanwhile, the international agenda is changing fast and not in our favour. We should maintain the continuity, certainty and stability of our local and foreign policy. It is necessary to continue the work on effective and successful implementation of social programs and the strategy of the first president. This can be achieved by the will of the people in upcoming elections. Kazakhstan is a democratic state. The president will be elected based on the will of the people. Kazakhstan is a democratic state. The interim president has signed a decree on conducting a snap general election. The Central Election Commission will approve the measures concerning all the terms and procedures related to election campaign, particularly the beginning of nomination procedure and the clarification on candidates' registration. The commission will also announce the campaigning period. Meanwhile, one candidate from the Republican Public Associations will be able to run for president. Kazakhstan is expanding its sales performance at the worldwide grain markets. According to the Kazakh Agriculture Ministry, the country plans to export 1 million tons of grains to Azerbaijan and Georgia by July. Specialists believe that the demand is high due to the good quality of the Kazakh products. Kazakhstan is active in the Iranian market and Iranian flour mills are interested in joint grain processing, which will allow to re-export flour to third countries. Мы видим тренд, что наше качественное зерно there is an increased demand for our high-quality grains. It is also important that the prices for the Kazakh grain have gone up. There is an increase in the export values in both usual and new markets. As you know, it is very important for us to preserve the markets of Afghanistan and Central Asia. This marketing year was very successful for Kazakhstan in terms of the export performance. We expect the export value to total about 10.5 million tons, which is higher by 500,000 to 600,000 tons compared to last year. We increased the export values compared to previous years, assessed the markets of Azerbaijan and Georgia, and increased shipment volumes to China. We also entered the Turkmenistan market for the first time. Meanwhile, the Kazakh government is currently holding talks with China on the ways to increase the exports of grains. In recent years, Kazakhstan increased the volumes of exported grains to China by four times. Last year, Kazakh agrarians harvested 20.3 million tons of grains, and I believe that this year will also be successful for Kazakhstan. Grain traders buy the Kazakh grains because they understand that there is a deficit of grain volumes and that in order to produce high-quality products such as noodles, they need to use the Kazakh grains, following the examples of countries such as China and Iran. The export volumes of Kazakh grains to China totaled more than 560,000 tons last year. The Kazakh government is set to boost the value up to 1 million tons by 2020. A project on establishing an office called the Economy of Simple Things was established in Almaty region within the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs. The office will focus on involvement of entrepreneurs in a new preferential loans program, the program's monitoring as well as on providing support for projects including business plan development and financing. The office will provide funding to small and medium businesses as well as large enterprises. The office members include specialists of the Chamber of Entrepreneurs, Damu Entrepreneur Support Fund, Second Tier banks and local authorities. The submitted projects should present sectors such as processing, agriculture or light industry. Similar offices were established in all regions of Kazakhstan. 
We identified about 65 companies with the lack of operating cash and we are working with them. The documents of three companies are being examined by the banks and about 12 companies are at the initial stage, which includes business plan development and collection of documents. I believe that we will work with more companies in the future. Financing for the manufacturing enterprises will be allocated from Kazakhstan's Republican budget and will total 600 billion tinge. Twelve new enterprises will be opened on the territory of the Special Economic Zone Horgos Eastern Gate. The Special Economic Zone is one of the major economic projects in Kazakhstan, consisting largely transport and industrial areas. The transport and logistics complex, Dry Port, also operates in the zone. For three years, the volume of container handling has increased by 18 times. Twelve participants are actively implementing their projects on the territory of the Special Economic Zone. This is a group of companies that work on the projects related to processing, agricultural products and production of canned products such as jam. There is a company that implements two projects, the construction of a concrete plant and the construction of a techno park on the reserve areas of the Special Economic Zone. There is another project that has large export potential. The need for feed mills is rising. On the territory of the SEZ, the first feed mill has been commissioned while the second mill is being completed. Once the mills are operating, the mills will process 60,000 tons of grain. The feed mills at the SEZ are semi-mixed, designed for all species and groups of animals. We can say with confidence that we completely cover the needs of the Penfilov district of the Almaty region. We will have nearly 40% of the export potential in order to conduct the cross-border trade with China. In the future, approximately 80 enterprises will operate in the Special Economic Zone. A number of light industry enterprises will also be operational in the area, apart from the Horgos Eastern Gate processing industries. The enterprises will produce clothes and footwear. In total, 13 projects worth 485 billion will be implemented until 2023. Products of the food industry of Kazakhstan were showcased at the largest international exhibition Uz Food 2019 in Tashkent. More than 200 large enterprises from 25 different countries took part in the fair, which was organized for the 19th time. Manufacturers presented a wide range of products, specifically food and various equipment of the food industry. Goods from Kazakhstan are in high demand in the market of Uzbekistan, particularly Uzbeks are interested in Kazakhstan's flour and dairy products. There is interest in our products both from the chain of suppliers and the visitors of this exhibition. There were unclarities regarding some products which we explained and showed everything. They know about our Beshbarmak noodles and our Jaima, which is very important for us. This is a national product of Kazakhstan and we hope to join the markets of Uzbekistan. Food suppliers organize B2B meetings and met with representatives of large trade chains of Uzbekistan. Last year, it yielded very good results. A number of suppliers already work in our market. Therefore, this year, we have expanded both the composition of the participants of the retail center and the composition of representatives of large retail chains. Tajikistan's ancient cities, picturesque nature and majestic Pamir are attractive to tourists. The number of tourists from all over the world visiting Tajikistan to enjoy views and delve into Central Asia's culture is increasing. The Gisar Fortress is a must-see site in Tajikistan, which takes over 17 hectares. The caravan of the Great Silk Road used to pass across this territory. The gates of the fortress were built 500 years ago in place of 16 destroyed fortifications. The history of the Gisar city which was the capital of the East Bukhara Emirate, dates back to ancient times. In 1946, archaeologist Alexei Pavlovich Akladinov found the culture of the Stone Age in Gisar. The culture is 8,000 years old. They also found a 4,200-year-old grave of the Bronze Age in the Gisar Fortress. This proves that this place is very ancient and has a very rich history. 
очень древняя, очень богатая историей. In the 6th century BC, Gisar was part of the Persian Achaemenid Empire. Two centuries later, the fortress became part of the Seleucid Empire and then the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom. This is evidenced by the ancient amphitheater built during the reign of Greeks. The amphitheater has been recently reconstructed. Today, work continues on the restoration of historically important buildings on the territory of the Gisar fortress, including the Palace of Rulers. Foreign tourists are interested in Gisar, which is one of the most important cities in the history of Central Asia. Last year, more than 9,000 tourists visited the fortress. This is my first visit to Dushan Bay. I've long been interested in this region's history. I'm lucky to come here. I haven't had enough time to explore the entire Gisar fortress, but I'm aware that this place is an important cultural monument for the people of Iran, Tajikistan, Afghanistan and Uzbekistan. The most outstanding part of the Gisar Fortress is located at an altitude of 850 meters above sea level. After the completion of restoration works, tourists will be able to visit a number of important architectural monuments. Archaeologists say that today only 20% of all information on the fortress is known by scientists. The years of research and excavation are yet to come. This will reveal many historical secrets of this region. Excursion programs to Astana Ballet revealing backstage secrets have become increasingly popular instantly. In a few months, these programs have earned the hearts of both locals and guests. A memorandum was signed between Astana Ballet and a number of tourism organizations in order to boost the tourist traffic to Kazakhstan's capital city. Astana Ballet is the first to sign this kind of memorandum among the cultural organizations. The theater is also the first to organize such a tour for guests, tourists and travel companies. I think this is a very good start. The city becomes more attractive to foreigners with the increasing number of such interesting facilities. According to the leadership of the theatre, the agreements have been signed to raise the capital cities and the country's tourism attractiveness and competitiveness at the international level. I believe that this is a very important step that can lead to great prospects. We organize a number of photo exhibitions and excursion programs. They differ from each other and are constantly changed. We are going to attract theatrical exhibitions to our theater. We make sure that every part in our programs is unique and improved. We always come up with new ideas when producing new programs. For example, a 2019 excursion program will be different from the 2020 excursion program. This is how visitors will stay interested in our facility because we work hard to ensure that our guests will stay tuned. This year, Asana Ballet will produce completely new performances for art connoisseurs, including The Legend of Love, The Journey of Memory and Cinderella. The miniatures of the performers will be included in the theater's excursion program. The Dombra has been used by Kazakhs for centuries to express the people's emotions such as grief, sorrow, happiness and joy. Artifacts proving the ancient origin of the musical instrument were found in a foreign archive. Fragments of the oldest Dombra were identified by Kazakh scientist Azil Khan Tajikiev. The musical instrument, discovered in Kizilorda region's Jetiasar ancient settlement, dating back to the 4th century, is being kept in the archives of a museum in Moscow. In the past, scientists has labeled the exhibit as an unknown wooden an item. Scientists are planning to make a copy of the instrument based on the original item. Similar musical string instruments were discovered in other parts of the world, particularly in Mongolia and Altai. The musical instrument discovered in Mongolia used to be considered as the oldest dombra discovered at that time and is dated back to the 7th century. Meanwhile, the musical instrument found in Altai is more similar to the kubis and is dated back to the Kimek tribe era. The dombra discovered in Kizilorda region is dated back to the 4th century and we have every reason to consider this discovery as the oldest string dombra discovered today. 
Kazakh craftsmen are credited for preservation of the Kazakh Dombra in its original form. Nurken Moldasan and Kwanish Bilaluli are craftsmen who are occupied with the ancient craft. They make a variety of musical instruments, including the Dombra. <laughs> We make various folk instruments, including dombra, kobis, jetigen, shirter, bas dombra, dabil, and dawil pas. We also make various percussion and wind instruments. These are the main instruments that we make. We tried to make the sibis gay, but we never made the sasernai because they are mainly made by musicians. <laughs> There are many foreigners among those who are learning to play the Dombra. Dutch national Volta Vielenga started playing the Dombra three months ago. The foreigner can sing songs in Kazakh and play traditional compositions. 59-year-old Volta is an engineer at a foreign company in Uralsk. The music admirer can play many musical instruments which helped him in his learning. The instrument helps him learn the Kazakh language. Recently uh, arrived in Kazakhstan and I really and I really wanted to play a traditional instrument in Kazakh. Well, it's, it's because it's, it's a very traditional instrument, it's very simple, but yet it uh, makes a very nice and characteristic sound. And I heard it play uh, when I arrived here um, on the television. <laughs> There are many people who are willing to learn to play Dombra, including elderly people and members of diverse ethnic groups, doctors and lawyers. They all attended my classes in order to learn to play Dombra. My goal is to create a big orchestra, which will include people of various ethnicities. I think that it would be great if they come together and play Kazakh folk compositions. <laughs> The Dombra is an instrument which allowed the Kazakhs to preserve the ancient songs and music of the Great Steppe. The holy instrument is played in large cities and small towns across Kazakhstan as the National Dombra Day is celebrated every year in July. For Kokpar player Alexander Pupienka, the game is not just a hobby but a lifestyle. Alexander dedicated his life to Kokpar. His love for horses and the national sport has determined the life of the country's best Kokpar player. He has started playing Kokpar when he was 14. At the age of 16, he played with the capital team. At the age of 20, he became part of Kazakhstan's national team. The athlete says that Kokpar is a sport for true men who are strong-willed with strong spirit. Alexander Popienka has won at the Asian Games and the World Kokpar Championship. On top of that, he also made it to the finale of the second stage of the 100 New Faces of Kazakhstan project. I can't live without Kokpar. I've got some injuries. There are two seasons and the finale. Then, a couple of months later, I start missing horses. I come back to the racetrack and prepare the horses. The common game of nomads is becoming increasingly popular, both among European nations and the young Kazakhs. Alexander has coached the youth team of Aktau for many years. Today, he aspires that the ancient equestrian sports will be revived and promoted on the international level. The youth are very good at the sport. I wish there would be an indoor hippodrome like the building of Boris Arena, a bicycle track and a football arena so people could play Kokpar all year round. It would be great to build a race track where tournaments will be organized with teams of other countries. Alexander Pupienka believes that the Kazakh national team will successfully represent Kazakhstan at the first Asian Youth Championship which will take place in Almaty in May.